All right, we are here for another episode of Critical Hits every Wednesday, right here on Griffin Radio, ten ish a.m. Woohoo! <laughs> Yay! Hello, hello. So, What's going on? I, as usual, am your host, DJ Keen, and as usual, I am joined by... DJ B. Millie, that's me. Yep, but we have a little bit of a change up today. DJ Threads Ooh. isn't able to make it. Aww. We understand that. She said she's not going to be able to promise to be here every week, yeah, but for we sure. are today joined by... DJ Noob. Hi, DJ yep. Noob. One of hey, our new A students, finally getting a chance to be on some live, casual Hooray. Hooray. shows with us, rather than just reading the news. <laughs> yeah, I decided that botching the news every morning wasn't enough, so I decided to come <laughs> botch your show, too. That's okay. I can botch the show all by myself. You're just adding to the fun. Okay, cool. Sounds like all a right. good time. <clears throat> so, this week, while I was looking for some good music to use... Mm. I realized one of my favorite sources of music in a lot of ways is the Blue Bomber, Ooh. Mega Man. Ooh. Ooh. Such yes. a good choice. He's got a lot of great series from the originals to X to Zero to yeah. Legends to Soccer, I think they did at one point. <laughs> the EXA games are pretty good, too. Yeah, they they yeah. will throw in like a sports game for every yeah. big name person. Oh, and the ZX games. I've played those a lot. Those are actually really good. Yeah, they're actually really good. Um, but the music, the music remains oh. really good throughout pretty much all of it. So I had a lot to choose from, but since I just love how sort of melodramatic and stupid it was, and it was one of my yeah. favorites back in the day, I decided to go with the X series. I mm. think when I went into the X series, I might have started with four as well. You were saying that new about yeah. you started with like four the first one i played was Mega Man x4 because my cousin had it on ps1 i don't think we ever beat it but we got we got very close to the end with both zero and x yeah and so that one's just really weird and whiny and melodramatic with the yeah. cut scenes and stuff like that and i, I love how stupid that is mm. that's where that and, famous um, cut scene comes from if you guys have ever seen that scene of zero like crying yeah asking what he's fighting for that's where that's where that cut scene comes from Mega Man x4 yeah uh and then i went back later and mm -hmm. played some of the earlier games the music remains great throughout oh it's so, so good since we're going to be doing x i didn't want to do the whole series because as i said there's a lot of good yeah, music I was throughout. Say that's a lot. yeah so i decided let's just go from the beginning Mega Man x the very first one love it and it's got some really good music so this one was uh released in japan in 1993 came out in america in 1994 mm -hmm. super nintendo and so it's um it was, honestly, it was meant to be melodramatic. It was a departure from the old series. Yeah. It's kind of lighthearted and kind of funny and stuff like that with the original Mega Man. So with Mega Man X, they decided to go really melodramatic about it. Like, Dr. Light gives him full free will. Yeah. But he's, he's worried that it might be dangerous to give a robot full free will. So he, like, seals him away in a container for supposedly like 30 years while it runs diagnostics on him then like dr light dies and like a hundred years later some other scientist unearths him and completely disregarding the warnings basically builds a whole of new course. a whole new generation of robots with free will if he regarded of his... the warnings we wouldn't have a beautiful video game exactly with music. so, so it builds you know a whole new generation of robots with free will based off of his designs and then we get a virus that shows up, <laughs> which was apparently created yep. by the original Dr. Wily, who oh. was the villain from the first series. Oh my gosh, his and theme still this gives me... is very convoluted nonsense. Basically, the virus turns the Reploids, which is this new generation of robots, into, again, quote-unquote, Mavericks. I listen to Dr. Wily's theme to this day. Yes. Not, not as a joke. Like, mm -hmm. I will look up Dr. Wily's theme... That 8-bit soundtrack music is so good. I don't know who composed it, but I'm... Have you gone on uh, oh, Have you gone on OC so Remix? Mm-mm. Uh, OCRemix.org. It's Overclocked Remix Game Remixes. They have probably like 30 based off of Dr. Oh, Wily stages. It's so Just because the song is good. so great. Yeah, it's so good. The one from Mega Man 2 is still like one of my favorite like songs. Like Mega Man is like some of my favorite music yeah. of all time in games pretty much and like yeah, the Mega Man Two Doctor Wily like stage one theme is like yeah. still amazing to this mm -hmm. day. Yeah, they also have an amazing remix based off of the music that plays when you're going up the building and then you get to the top where Mega Man is, and it's like, 
I it's feel some great I stuff. feel like it's in general like something that game companies will do. Like it's obvious that you want to feel like you're fighting the final boss when you fight the final boss. Yeah. But whenever you're in Dr. Wily's stage, I'm there when the music starts playing. When Dr. Wily's theme is playing, that I'm instantly back in like kindergarten. Yeah. Playing with playing Mega Man with my friends. Yeah, mm-hmm. it has a good sense of finality to it. Like this is like this is the final like place. So it it, oh. it it's very fitting for that sort of environment. Mm. So good. All right. We'll go to our first little break. Ooh. We've got some nice intro stuff for you guys. Oh, I love it. I've got the song from the first stage cuz as some people may remember, this game doesn't really start to like a whole intro section you start up the game and literally you're teleported into the first stage and you do the first stage and then you get to like the titles and all that sort of stuff after it yeah well for those of you that don't know how Mega Man games work they usually don't have like a stage one stage two thing you'll get like you said past the first screen and then you'll pick which one of the well, not even that. that. You... Usually they drop you into some little story segment at the beginning mm-hmm. where you run a first stage oh, no, and there's storyline I mean. and stuff like yeah. that. And then you get to the stage selection where you'll yeah. get uh, in the original it was Robot Masters. In yeah. this one it's Mavericks and there will be like eight of them and you can choose in any order to go yeah. to their stages yeah, yeah. and face them basically. So I've got the first stage for you. Perfect. And then um, as Noob was saying, we had a new character, Zero, not just Mega Man X, but Zero came in. And I've got two songs from Zero. The first is at the end of the first stage, you basically face a boss you're meant to lose to. Mm -hmm. You can technically beat him, and then he just beats you in a cutscene anyway. (laughs) And so to introduce their new amazing cool character, he rushes in to save you against this Uh... boss. And so we got that song when he rushes in. And then he also has his own theme song that I have, (laughs) because those are both really good (laughs) songs. So I'll play those for you guys, and then we will be right back. Love it. Bye. 
Oh man, eight bit music is this honestly quality music. This is why we have DJ B. Millie here, people. It's so good because my eight bit singing voice is <laughs> amazing. Your singing voice in general and your dancing <laughs> is just great. So there was um, definitely some things I wanted to talk about there, especially with that last song, Please? which was the theme song for their new character Zero. And what I love about that is people who play the original Mega Man more and didn't really play X as much yeah. might have kind of felt like that song reminded them of someone. Oh. Because in the original Mega Man, there was another robot that uh, Dr. Light had created. It's like the older brother, basically, of Mega Man and Roll. Huh. Proto Man. Yeah. And he had a very similar kind of theme to that. And Proto Man oh. had a lot of very similar kind of he's got like a similar personality and like color yeah. scheme he, they're both red yeah. and they, they're both like these kind of like mysterious loner kind of types exactly he that's was, interesting he was very very similar to zero in, yeah like you were saying in personality and design and stuff like that huh. not even just and so it feels it felt to me when i was looking at it like they took sort of chunks or themes or a little light motif or whatever from like proto man's theme yeah. and used that to develop zero's theme wow that's actually really interesting i didn't know that because yeah. the first one that I played was X as well, so. Yeah, and then I also wanted to say that um, Zero's pretty much been my favorite character, but a lot of people, it's like, oh, Zero's so much better than X, and I was going to say, that's because the um, the character designer for the original Mega Man series and all that, he didn't design X himself. He had someone else designing X, and he was giving feedback, but he actually hand-designed Zero, When he was moving from the original to Mega Man X, he wanted it to be a very different game. He didn't want it to be the same Mega Man game, and so he wanted a very different main character, Mm -hmm. right? So he was designing Zero as a main character (sighs) to begin with. But they decided they didn't want to... They didn't want to diverge quite that much, so they decided to have X and have X be the main character and have Zero be, like, a side character. Yeah. But I just I really mean, like Zero, um, especially like the fact that he uses a sword in a yeah. game with all these robots and guns. And it's sure it's a laser sword and all that. And in a couple Still of the games, in a couple of the games, he's used like a gun and stuff too. But well, he has the Buster. But his main thing, his like his main move set is always revolved around like he gets a lot of special moves with the sword that X doesn't get to do. So X has like X has always been more of like a projectile kind of character. Yeah, but Zero's always been a uh, very like close range, a lot of physical attacks. He still has some in later yeah. games. He in gets like most, some, and that's, like, in attacks. most pop culture, especially in like Japanese pop culture, there seems to always be that guy with the sword that's cooler than the main character. You got your trunks from Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. You got your Riku from your Kingdom Hearts. You've always got that it's, character that's like more mysterious and cool and has like a cooler weapon. It's something that's always yeah. carried over. Um, it's I don't, a, it's I don't a cool know, theme. I don't know exactly where it started, but the earliest I can think of that I've heard people talking about where it started was in the old uh, Sentai shows, mm. like the the Japanese versions the, of what we know as like Power Rangers, right? It's, it's always the Green Ranger or like the White Ranger that has like yeah. the. Uh, that's well, always way cooler yeah, than the what, Red Ranger. What we in America know as like Power Rangers, a lot of the footage from the fights and stuff when they're in their yeah. costumes was taken from a Japanese what they call Sentai show which is like costumed heroes basically yeah, well that, it's a Power cool, Rangers yeah. is like and they always pretty much have like the leader the red guy who's all oh, noble yeah. and leadery <laughs> and then the other guy the other <laughs> ranger basically who's like I don't care that you're the yeah. leader who cares yeah. and he's always better yeah and everybody likes him more <laughs> yeah well, but he's, he's never more, the one in charge they're more special well it's a cool motif and it works because when you see Change is always going to be popular amongst people, no matter what it is. Yeah. But changing, like, the formula completely to, like, oh, my God, they're so cool with their guns. They're killing all these. Oh, my God, that guy's got a sword. <laughs> what? You know that guy's, like, you know that guy's strong because he brought a sword to a gunfight, and he's really good with the sword. Yeah. He's the strongest guy there. Yeah. He brought a sword to a gunfight, and he beat up the boss that just beat you up. But yeah. to get back to the music, too, it's like, They'll give them the theme as well. They'll give them mm-hmm. a separate, like... Because I'm pretty sure Trunks had, like, his own, like, intro music in Trunks Dragon Ball Z. Trunks absolutely got his own. Yeah. And, and it, like you were saying with yeah. Power Rangers, the Green Ranger had his own theme. In fact, yeah. he tended he, to play had, it on a flute. He had his own theme, and he had his own, like, special, like, mech. Like, he he was the only yeah. one who didn't, like, combine with the other guys. His mech was its own thing. Do you remember... Not only that, he would play his own theme on his flute. 
Yeah. And do you remember <laughs> he had his own? He literally had his own like vocal set of orchestra in the Power Rangers clips when he turned white it was like mm-hmm. white ranger tiger power white <laughs> so ranger a... ti- but it's like oh my god the white ranger's here and he's riding a tiger that's so dope <laughs> and it's like you hear it and you're like because you love the because you love the power rangers theme music and it's like dun, 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 dun. Mm-hmm. you know you're running through and you're just like god i love this song and it's like wait whoa what there's a new song for this guy <laughs> how cool is he does he also get his own like shoe line with nike (laughs) like he's so cool and i feel like that's a motif that works really well is not only giving them that you know that weapon or that power or even just that color that Mm -hmm. makes them very distinct from the main character or characters but also that music that helps you like lock on to okay we are with a completely different person because they're not playing the Power Rangers theme again. Yeah. They're not playing X's theme again. They're playing Zero's theme because yeah. Zero has his own theme because he's an important enough side character and we want people to be invested in this cool alter ego Mega Man. Yeah, this, this is a character with their yeah. own story. They're not They're not just there exactly. to like supplement like your story. This guy could go off and like... The reason why that character is almost never there is because exactly. they're usually doing their own thing. Like the White yeah. Ranger, like... I don't remember how they did it, but the White Ranger he would like he would like come and go constantly, like right? Yeah, yeah. And then it got kind of boring because they eventually just made him the Red Ranger in a follow up series yeah. or whatever, and it was. Eh. I don't remember. But that. um. But yeah, to get but back, what you were saying yeah. about more interesting story is absolutely true. Zero story is so much more interesting than mm-hmm. X's when you finally get into it games and games later, and yeah. like his connection to Wily and the virus and the Mavericks and all this other stuff, and it's just so much more interesting. It's. It is it is a motif that works very well, especially with their music, because they establish these characters for so long, and they're very, very cool. And that's why you watch the show, is because these characters in themselves are already cool enough. Mm-hmm. Because if you take away that cool side character with the sword or his own music, you still got your show. You've still got Mega Man without Zero. Yeah. You can't have you can't have Mega Man with Zero and no Mega Man, but you can have it with just Mega Man. Yeah, but they had an entire generation of exactly. games with no zero. Yeah, exactly. So although they had Proto Man, but <laughs> he wasn't he wasn't as prevalent. Really to, you couldn't get to play as I don't think you could get to play. I don't think you could get no. to play as Proto Man in the old. I don't games. recall you ever getting to play as him, except maybe in one of the more recent games. Yeah, like one of the newer ones. I remember. Yeah. I think Mega Man like nine or ten. You could play as him, but like he's like nowhere. He's nowhere near as different or like unique as Zero is. He like, wasn't as involved. He's not as involved, and he's just not as like interesting as Zero. He yeah. he plays almost exactly like Mega Man. And they've and they've played around with the formula of this for a long time because you know Japanese and Japanese culture in general makes very good like tension building and very good characters as a whole. Ninety yeah. percent of the characters we're going to talk about were made by Japanese culture, just yeah. in general. So, but they've messed around with the formula of bringing in that cool guy and having him have his own cool theme music to come in and save the day of the hero that you thought could do everything yeah and it's it's very it's very like oh like makes you sit up on your seat with your controller in hand when you see this like dope guy with a laser sword come in and save mega man who saves mega man yeah that's the, yeah. Yeah. zero zero saves mega man they give so. you like a goal to, to to like strive for like you could be like you're this is where mm-hmm. you are now but if you if you keep going you could be like you could be as cool as zero eventually. exactly that's it's, that's literally what it was <laughs> from the yes. beginning of the game. It's like, don't worry, Mega Man. You have so much more potential than I do. You could be so much stronger than I am now. You just need time, sort of thing. Also, it's like, who saves Mega Man? Who beats Mega Man? Yeah, exactly. And that's why a lot of people seem to fall in love with the character who did beat him in the first stage, which is Vile, mm-hmm. who not only is like a Boba Fett esque character in yeah. that he never really does anything, but everyone seems to love him. But he actually looks like Boba Fett too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he is actually inspired by Boba Fett. I his, think his he was. Name, his name in Japanese is like similar to Bo- It's similar to Boba Fett. It's yeah. I think it's. I think he's called. He, I think he's like called said, Baba in, in Japanese. Like I said, he's another character like that who looks cool and everyone fell in love yeah. with him. But he never really did anything in the series. No, he was but just he was just a strong guy that was there in the people, beginning. People love change. They love change from the norm and. Yeah. When Mega Man normally goes and beats his bad guys, it's fun. It's a fun game, and that's why people play it. But it's also much more intense. It makes the enemy much more interesting to beat when you finally do it. Mm. And it makes the music much more intense because it's like, oh my gosh, what's playing right now? Why is this music getting so somber and fast? Wait, Mega Man lost? Yeah. Wait, 
why aren't my buttons working? It, he just has to automatically lose. Yeah. I don't get to win against this guy. It's very tension building, and I think they do that really well, not only with like the game itself, but with the music, because when Zero, you have that like tension build up with uh, that boss that beats him, but then you have that tension relief from that dope song when Zero comes in and saves the day, because mm-hmm. you're like, wait, oh man, Mega Man's gonna get up, and then it's like, ch I'm sorry, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> like, he just, like, runs in and blasts yeah. Lyle. And then, it's like, I'm sorry, and what? And they both just they both just fly off screen and fight somewhere else, basically. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, very, it's very good storytelling. And it's not only very good storytelling, but it's just very good music making to make. Because if you noticed, if you listen to the songs, it's got that, like, somber, like, tension to it. Mm-hmm. But then, like, Zero comes in and it's like, like you said, yeah. 8-Bit Music still finds a way to be, like, rock and roll like yeah, it finds a way that's absolutely the feel they seem to go yeah. for for this one yeah. was even though they're using like midi and digital and it's all like fake instruments they still went with this like rock metal sort of theme to the mm-hmm. thing with like lots of guitar sounds and stuff like that which is pretty amazing also what you're talking about with um people loving changing yeah. up uh it is one of the reasons why i like Mega Man x more than i did the original one is even mechanically the way they changed up Whereas the original Mega Man was kind of yeah. slower, and you got like a slide later on and stuff like that. It's a very simple game. They tried yeah. to change it up later, but like from, all the changes they made kind of like made it like right. worse. From the very beginning of X, you mm. get he has a dash, and he can dash in the air, and he can climb walls, and everything about his mechanics just made it a much faster game. He can't just jump everywhere. What is this air dash I can do? Yeah. Wait, what? It is. It is true. It. And then just being able to, like, slide down the walls and, like, mm -hmm. jump up them and stuff like that. People, anything needs to adapt to survive. And I feel like Mega Man did that really well, not only with its gameplay, but with its music. Because, like you said, the 8-bit themes of, like, Dr. Wily were just, like, very, like, dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. And now it's, like, dun 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 Because, like you said, they found a way to put guitar riffs, like, not really not very high quality of course because of the time period yeah but they found a way to make it work and it was just that subtle change in music choice mm. from like strictly 8-bit to like oh let's add some guitar because we want zero to seem cool it's yeah. like oh okay yeah, i'm on board mm-hmm. immediately with this it's a good way of telling story using using your music and your exactly. soundtrack because games back then they didn't have very uh it was very hard to tell like a good story back then with just writing cause, yeah uh, because they were they were just so simple. It's just text on a screen, but music is a great way. The old games did it really well. Music was a great way to give your game like these like sorts of uh, to Emotions. tell a story. Yeah, to like make you feel emotional. That they did they, mm-hmm. they'd like set like um, they were so good at setting tone back then with like with the music and games. That is yeah. that is a perfect point. I think it's it's hard to convey emotion with just text on a screen, but when you hear that emotional music, you instantly hook it to that emotion because when he says. If he says, like, hey, I have to save you, if you just see that on text while it's blank, it's like, oh, okay. well, there's no music playing, so what am I supposed to feel? But if it's, like, like fun and, like, high pitch, it's like, oh, okay, we're starting our adventure. He's going to save everyone. <laughs> but if it's, like, somber and slow, it's like, oh, my gosh, did somebody just die? <laughs> like, does he have to save everybody because somebody died now? So mm-hmm. it was a very cheap and effective way of instilling emotion into what was just text on a screen. All right. We've talked about our heroes. Mm. Next, we're going to talk about some of our villains. Oof. Oof. So I got wow. three of the stage songs, I guess we'll call them. They're okay. basically the songs of the bosses because each stage is associated yeah. with a particular boss. And some of these songs are amazing, <laughs> <laughs> especially from the very first X game. So the ones I've got for you are from Storm Eagle, who's wow. probably the, uh, the most famous one. Yeah, the most famous song of this game, basically, well, is Storm Also, Eagle's just stage. a really iconic boss to Mega Man X. He's yes. like, still regarded as like one of the like the most interesting bosses, I think. Yeah, so this is basically an eagle. Do you have my favorite? A big bipedal eagle robot in like jets and planes and stuff in the air. And then I have... Tell me the other ones you have. I have I'm... Spark Mandrel, who's like this <sighs> electric yes. power plant sort yes. of stage. I lo- I've always Spark loved Mandrel. Spark Mandrel, not just because because it reminds me of the Sonic chemical plant zone, mm-hmm. like that like electric kind yeah. of like 
almost EDM before EDM was a thing vibe. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my gosh, thank you for having Spark Mandrill. No problem. And then I also have Chill Penguin. Ooh, good choice. Yeah, I listened to all eight of them over and over, and I'm like, these Picked are the your top three. three. These are yeah. the three I need. All right, so we will be back. For now, you get to listen to some very cool boss stage themes. I will be listening.
<laughs> Couldn't help myself. <laughs> that is awesome. Eventually I going through the stages, you're going to beat the boss. Dun, 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 and I have dun, dun, the stage dun. clear little, tiny little like 10 second oh, long bit. That is beautiful. Couldn't help myself. Honestly, I had the stage selection and the s- yeah. and after you chose it, so the stage selection is like two and a half minutes long and it's mm. what's playing when you're on the screen okay. where you're looking to choose a boss to go against. But I also had the little like nine second start as well, but <laughs> uh, I didn't want to play that because we're going a little longer yeah. and I just wanted to get to the music. But That's I couldn't it. help but put the stage oh, clear song in there. It was a beautiful well, little like, cherry oh. on top. Yeah. You have, to have the, you have to have that really iconic jingle. Yeah. Absolutely. So those are some of the bosses that you face Love in it. the first part of the game because there's always two parts to a Mega Man uh-huh. game. And so all the Mega Man X, all the original Mega Man games were like Power Man, basically, right? Yeah. It was like Heat Man, Ice Man, yeah. Cut Man, Guts Man, you know, yeah, then all it, that. And they were like, X, they, they were like, to like animals. yeah, they were like yeah. bipedal, humanoid ish looking, not very human, but humanoid ish yeah. type of people. So in X, they ended up moving into sort of anthropomorphized animal robots. So I think it worked great, too. Be, they'd also be like bipedal humanoid-ish, but they'd be like a penguin or a mammoth or an eagle or things like that. And so that's where you get them like Storm Eagle, Spark Mandrel, Chill Penguin. Yeah. And so all the powers are pretty easy to understand obviously yeah. right storm eagle wind spark mandrel lightning chill penguin ice yeah they, they've always but, had that sort of like really simple naming convention where you can you can tell what the boss's element is going to be but yeah the uh the second part's always different in Man x but i always loved about the stage themes is the way they put you there like we were saying it's very simplistic stuff yeah. this is all midi it's beeps boops and bips yeah. stuff like that <laughs> and somehow they're still able to make me feel like i'm going through this icy snowy cavern with like icicles overhead and chill penguin stage you know it is, something about that xylophone yeah. sound makes it sound like it just sounds like icicles like falling or like uh mm-hmm. or like someone's like hitting icicles kind of you are correct yeah so they they've come up with some pretty interesting bosses yeah. over the years and then i still remember there was that one Mega Man X game, which was it, five or something like that, where uh, like the was? the woman that was in charge of uh, translating to American to English, yeah, the names of the bosses had like a boyfriend that was really in love with like Guns and Roses and stuff like that, and ended up naming all the bosses really not they're, quite oh, right. Oh, really? Yeah, they're they're all named mm-hmm. after Guns and Roses members. I think uh, what, was it was it that one where they named after like Guns and Roses members? Yeah, and stuff like stuff like rock music and all that. Like one of the bosses is this big whale and I think he's called like Duff McWhalen. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really weird and goofy. That's so dumb. Is that the one that had Slash Man or was Slash Man earlier? No, it was Slash Slash something. It wasn't Slash Man. It was Slash Something. I think he was a, like a tiger or an yeah, he was like a tiger lion or something. something right? And I don't remember what oh, they called him exactly. Boy. But it was slash something. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. Man, I love it. I love it yeah. so much. And I feel like you're completely correct in the fact of like, it's so hard to convey that I'm going through an icicle zone, like mm-hmm. you've said so beautifully with beeps, boops, and bops. Yeah. But they do it so well because. They just use a lighter tone and a higher register, mm-hmm. and I'm instantly in an icicle e zone. And very rapid pace, basically. Yeah. Very rapid pace on the very yeah. high beeps, basically, because to give it, this really like rain or snow or like ice sort of feeling to it. Yeah, because if you play Spark Mandrill's song, I feel like I'm in an underground electrical zone. Mm-hmm. But if you played that in like a desert scene or like a forest scene, I'd be like. It's kind of odd, but I'll go with it because you put it here. Yeah. Instead of like, wow, this is perfect. Mm. So even with Storm Eagle, somehow they yeah. managed to capture it. You're like on top of planes and blimps and things like mm-hmm. that, and running through the sky and jumping across them and stuff. And it's like somehow they managed to capture it with that <laughs> fast pace, yeah. more kind of airy, yeah. more. It's... Something about that like horn sound just makes you think of like airplanes for some reason, or like an airfield. Yeah. And it's just amazing how they're able to do that. Oh. So, speaking of which, yeah, um, like the whole thing was composed for Mega Man X by a group within Capcom that they call like their Alf Lila group. Okay. I don't know why they call it that. <laughs> okay. But the person who was like the sole composer for it originally was Setsuo Yamamoto. Okay. Who composed most of it. Um, oh. 
pretty much all of it. But near the end, he ended up bringing in a, a number of other people. And I'm guessing this is the Alf Lila group that they're talking about. And so it's like, um, who else was there? Uh, Yuki Iwai, Toshiko Horiyama, Yuko Takehara, and uh, Makoto Tomozawa. All of them were brought in late late in the production and they just yeah. sort of helped finish up the soundtrack and it's just amazing to me how they managed oh. to get the feeling the sound all yeah. of it to work so well together and it's i can't imagine what a studio day like that would be back then with like just the 8-bit tools that they have like get their whole mm-hmm. team together because you know for a fact that these composers i mean not know for a fact i'm not going to speak for people and like how they went through their process yeah. but i would assume that especially back then they would play the song on like some sort of classical classical instrument like a piano mm. like get the feel for it in terms of yeah. the keys and the pitches and Getting stuff an like that. Getting an idea for what they want um, yeah, with they, actual instruments. I think they yeah. did do that. And then um, yeah. yeah. I remember um it, it this game's not remembered very fondly now but when Mighty Number no. 9 was coming out uh, and they, they they brought back the composer for the original Mega Man games they mm. like showed her like playing the themes on a piano. So I think they yeah. actually do that. They they played on real instruments to kind of get like that like pitch right. Oh man, just, I would, just, just to try like and get the notes that they want, yeah, the to, beat that they to want, get that and everything feel that right. they want, Beca- and then you try yeah. to convert that to something that'll work on whatever storage space you had. Because exactly. back then, with the Nintendo, with a Super Nintendo in that era, the problem was what music can we actually create that'll fit on this disc and that'll fit on this cartridge and not take up the whole cartridge. Basically. Yeah, but it's I would have just loved to seen the process. The mm. process that they went through because there's no like, oh, just go on the computer and look up a music app or like a type your piano with your keyboard thing. They yeah. probably had to go through like seven, eight more steps just to get one note onto a digital platform. <laughs> it probably. Yeah. So it's probably. Just with how difficult it is for us to do what we need to do. And exactly. how difficult it sounded even before when we were using mini discs and stuff like that. There's probably a bunch of steps. Back in 92. 90- Three ninety four. Yeah. There's probably so many steps just for and them to get the song, and that's crazy because that's what not even thirty years ago. Yeah, not even thirty years ago, like twenty five, twenty six years ago, it was like eight, nine more steps just to get a beep and a boop <laughs> onto your video game that had a side scrolling character, and now we're mm-hmm. basically going with VR and like having our music and our headphones be completely easy and yeah. it's like well that's why I appreciate older music so much mm. N- not just music but this kind of yeah. goes for movies too where I appreciate practical effects more than like digital effects mm. Mm. there was so much more like work uh, there was like so much more of a challenge to like making sort of music like that work so I have a lot of respect for it because uh, just like it just must have been so difficult to try and create like that feel you're going for with, with such a simple with such simple sounds yeah. and equipment at the time Mm. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure it's extremely hard to make music that fits now because yeah. expectations are so much higher for yeah. actual real music. But also, like, just storage in general, they probably had so many problems with that because they, I can't imagine how many songs that they probably thought, like, oh man, this is great. Like, I've got a three minute song, it's got like two verses a chorus and a crescendo in the middle and then the studio came in and it's like yeah you have 20 seconds and you have to repeat it on a loop good luck yeah. it's like what yeah that because, is that is one thing we've yeah. we've had going through the Mega Man X soundtrack is um, I tend to be fading the songs out yeah. long before they're finished because a lot of them are 30 40 maybe 60 seconds long and then they loop over and over yeah. while you're playing through a stage or while you're doing this or that and so they're great songs but they also tend to be very short songs. Just how music worked back then because mm-hmm. it took up so much space to put musical audio onto a game. Yeah. It took up so much more space than the game required. And this was Super Nintendo era. So these yeah. people were like, oh, oh, thank God. Amazing. We have the storage space of a Super Nintendo. We can fit so much more on now, <laughs> oh, right? Because they're coming off the Nintendo. So. Yeah. We can now have 20 seconds of audio instead of yeah. 15 seconds. Yeah, exactly. But they did, they did say that, actually. Like, they, I've seen in multiple cases when I do songs from, like, Nintendo or Super Nintendo era, they're, like, moving over to the Super Nintendo. They were basically amazed and kind of overwhelmed at the same time as how much they could get on the yeah. cartridge. And so it made a lot of, like, the composers and even a lot of the designers for the game itself yeah. really have to rethink what they wanted to do because they had so much more space that it was both great, but it was also like, what am I supposed to do with this? Oh, yeah. Well, and don't quote me on this, but I believe in one of the older, like, Super Nintendo games that they made, one of the more popular ones, 
it might have been a Mario game. Don't quote me on this, I think. But I'm pretty sure that in one of their processes, they composed the music for the stages first Mm -hmm. and had their game designers listen to the music as they were designing the stage. So get the feel for it while they're designing the stage because a lot of the times in the process, all of these parts are separate and then just get pieced together by an editor or a clipper. Mm -hmm. And like a lot of the times, vice game designers don't get to hear the music before they make their stage and vice versa. Yeah. Music designers don't get to see what they're making music for and game designers don't get to hear what their game's going to be a part of. Well, so, also game design is a very evolutionary yeah. type of process. Yeah. What someone's working on a year out from the game being done mm-hmm. is going to be very different from what you'd get when the game is done. So here right? stages yeah. will change, characters will change, mm-hmm. entire storylines will be added yeah. or taken out, songs will be completely revised. So hearing I feel like hearing that and like we said, even with that 8-bit, getting that vibe, it com- it has to completely j- change a game designer's... I didn't hear anything. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, but it does have to change a game designer's outlook on how they're going to go about designing the game when they hear the Arctic Zone music mm. and they hear this 60-second loop and it's like, oh, okay, I could put this here and this here for yeah. this icicle, this icy like snow zone yeah. because of the way this music sounds. So it's... It's impressive, like we said, that even with the beeps, the boops, and the bops, they still conveyed emotion. They conveyed vibes. They Don't con- forget the bips. Oh, can't forget the v- bips. I'm sorry. That's... How dare I? <laughs> no, but not what only that, convey... What was that in Spaceballs? Oh, Ooh, man. I can't remember. Which one? The, 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 the guy who does, like, vocal, <laughs> like, sound effects. Carl Winslow. Yeah. Yeah. Right, where he's got uh, lost the the boops, the bips, and the... (laughs) He's, like, doing all the sounds for the sonar, (laughs) basically. Sorry. Okay, way off topic. No, it's okay. But I just think think it's really impressive how, with all of that, they can not only convey convey emotion, but convey a real sense of feeling like you are where you're playing. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's about a good time. Okay, we have plenty of villains that we fight yes. but in every Mega Man game there's always a series oh. of villains you fight robot masters yeah. mavericks be it whatever and then you find out that there's a big villain behind them which shouldn't be a surprise because it's the same big villain every that time yeah. in the Sly original, dog in the original Mega Man game it's always Dr. Wily uh, and in the Mega Man X games it's always Sigma the man the myth the legend himself they always, they doesn't matter feel like a mystery though I don't know why I they don't even, know but this I love is also another reason why Mega Man X is like so melodramatic and kind of stupid, but in the best like oh, cheesy way. Love it. Is because Sigma was like the original leader of the Maverick Hunters, and then got infected and turned Maverick, and now he's like your main villain. Love it. And I'm like, that is so melodramatic. Sigma and Wily, so <laughs> good. So, our next segment, I have a couple of songs from Sigma. I have one love of it. his stages, because like Wiley, you have like three or four stages you go through yeah. of his. So I have one of his stages, which I thought had the best music of all of them. And then I have one of his boss themes for when you're facing him. Ooh. And then at the end, I have a little bit of an extra for you guys before we go Ooh. out that I threw in just because I really like it, yeah. and that is the Dr. Light theme. Oh, wow. Because for people who don't know, even though Dr. Light made X and then sealed him away and then died in between the two series, basically, Dr. Light has like left behind little relics to help X, which are basically, in each game, it's like upgrades to his armor, which becomes really weird because how did Dr. Light make so many capsules all over the world? But we'll gloss don't over that for it. now. Yeah, details, don't think about baby, that. details. Basically, there's about four of these in most games. Some games even have eight Ooh. where he has two different sets of armor, but it basically just upgrades different parts of your armor, cool. like head, chest, feet, and then a buster, I think, upgrade. And they always um, get you the coolest power-up when you get all of them. Yes. Cool. And so each of these are set up by Dr. Light, and so you get like a hologram of Dr. Light talking to you and bequeathing you this upgrade before you get it, and it has a great <laughs> little song there that plays when he's talking to you. Love it's it. It's just awesome. So we'll do those and then come back, and then I have one more song for the outro and one more little thing I wanted to go over, just cool. how melodramatic and cheesy this series is, and I love it. Yeah, love it. We will be back soon.
Love it. Yeah, I absolutely love that one with Dr. Light. But like I said to you during the little break when mm-hmm. we were doing it, this is like, that's one of the, the smallest ones. That's yeah. like a 15 or 20 second loop, basically. Well, like you said, it's really only when you open one of the capsules to upgrade your armor and he yeah. has a little conversation with you and then goes mm-hmm. on his merry, yeah. his merry afterlife way. It's usually, <laughs> it's usually very, you actually, you end, you end up skipping it most of the time because you already know what he's going to say. So it's, it's, it's a very brief encounter. Yeah. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything. Unless you guys have anything more you wanted to say, I think it was oh, a beautiful uh, episode. I think it was the, good. Uh, I want to talk about Doctor Light a little more. Okay. About one of the coolest things in Mega Man X that you get the upgrade that you get when you find all the armor pieces. Mm-hmm. So uh, for those that don't well, know, which one? There's a couple different ones. The very last one, the the secret one. Well, there's the one that a gives couple you, of different ultimate oh. upgrades when you get all the armor. There's the Hadouken. That's the one I was going to talk about. Yeah, oh, there's Ryu and Ken from the Street Fighter. You get a Hadouken that you can only do, I think, once, only if you have full health. You have to have but full if you, health, yeah. And it's kind of slow, but if you hit a boss with it, it'll like kill them instantly. Yeah, Mega Man X1 was the Hadouken, <laughs> and I think in X2 was the Shoryuken. No, or uh, they, or I don't know. X3? I don't know if it, what was in X2, but I know later on they started doing something they called the Gaia Crash. Which is basically, or Giga Crash. Giga Crash, I think it was. Sorry. Uh, which was basically like a screen fill, just decimation move that, again, <laughs> you could only use like once and only if you had all four of the upgrade armor pieces. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. But yeah. I've, I've always liked the, uh, I'm pretty sure Zero did get the Shoryuken. It's not the Shoryuken, but it's a very similar move Zero to did. it. Yeah, Zero but that got was an, like that. But that wasn't an X armor upgrade thing. The thing is that when they started introducing Zero as a playable character, they wanted to differentiate him more from X. And this wasn't until, like, X4, really, when this started. That's where he started getting, like, his unique moves. Yeah, you could play as him a little bit in X3, but whenever you beat a boss, X gets basically an elemental attack that he can fire from his cannon Hmm. uh, that's based on the boss he beat. I played X, so. Yeah. So that's what X will do. He'll he'll upgrade basically like Mega Man did in the original games. He gets a cool. new attack that's based on the boss, and he like fires it out of his cannon. Huh. But they wanted to differentiate Zero a bit. So what they ended up doing is every time Zero would beat a boss, he would get a different type of attack that was like a fighting game move. It oh, was cool. like a command move, right? You had to do huh. like forward, back, circle, up, down, that sort of stuff. That's very cool. Yeah, you had to execute it like a, a fighting game move. And he basically had access to all of them. You didn't have to switch between them like X did, but you huh. had to execute the command properly. And some of them were elemental-based. Like, you beat the fire boss, you get one that's fire-based and will burn enemies if you hit them. Stuff like that. Um, so he got a number of them. And you're right, he got something that was kind of like the Shoryuken, like an uppercut, yeah, it's basically. Like a flaming uppercut. Yeah, that, I think, was Flame Mammoth. I think when you beat him, you got, like, a flaming sword uppercut rather than an arm uppercut. So it'd be like he'd like swing his sword up and fly into the air, and it'd be yeah, on fire, basically. I remember it was a very, very similar move to a Shoryuken. Yeah, but, uh, for sure you get the Hadouken in Mega Man X One, and uh, that's yes, that's that's, that's X One. That's always been one of my favorite power ups because yeah. I I adore fighting games, and I really love Street Fighter. I love I love the older Street Fighter games, and uh, Capcom, who makes Mega Man X, also makes Street Fighter. So I I always thought mm. it was really uh, charming that, that they would like reference Street Fighter in a Mega Man game because when you get the uh, when you get the Hadouken, Dr. Light is actually dressed up as Ryu when you like see him. Oh, yeah, I remember yeah. that. The hologram of Dr. Light actually has the, ha- the Ryu outfit <laughs> when he gives you the Hadouken. Yeah. That's yeah, and funny. It's, I've, I've always loved that. It's super charming. And, and Capcom still does this. To, they still do that to this day where uh, they reference their other video games in their in their other games. Like, oh, yeah, uh, all the time. Like if you're if you're interested, if you're like paying attention to DMC5, uh, you can get the Mega Man, the Mega Buster in, in DMC5. Mm-hmm. And, and he I'm- jumps... He I'm jumps absolutely just like Mega certain there will be references to like Bayonetta or Resident <laughs> Evil stuff or whatever <laughs> in reference, DMC5 as well. They reference Street Fighter a lot in the Dead Rising games too, and uh, Mega Man a yeah. lot too. So that's I've yeah. always really loved that when games do that. So that's that that's always been like my favorite power power, just the Hadouken in Mega Man X. <laughs> yeah, it's good too. It like I said, strong. a little slow, but if you hit one of the Mavericks with it, it'll take them out in one hit. Yeah, so. Even Sigma. Yeah, it works on him too, right? I don't know, but it's, it's it hard, might. It's hard I don't to remember. hit him with because he's so fast, or he's up in like a high spot usually. Yeah, you actually, yeah, I think I do remember someone saying that they hit him with the Hadouken while they were up high near his head, where they could actually hit him, and it actually took him out in one hit. Interesting. I don't remember for sure though. Okay, I have one more song, which will be our outro for the show. Love it. Um, this is not 
uh, from the game itself. This is instead uh, another like orchestral remix of a I song that was these. in the game. Loved, loved the one last week. So I decided to get an orchestral remix made years later, not with little beeps, boops, and bips, but <laughs> an actual instruments and stuff uh, for the ending theme to the game. And I wanted to do this one because it's a great song. I absolutely love the way it sounds. But also it allows me to talk about the ending quote, which is basically text that goes by the screen while okay. this is playing. And this just capitalizes immensely on like the melodrama and the cheesiness that love I, I love so much about Mega Man X. Tell it to me, Steven. So the Tell quote, it to me. <laughs> the quote as it's written is, The war has ended for now and peace has been restored. But those who sacrifice themselves for the victory will never return, which is a complete lie. <laughs> they come back like the very next game. They come back and they're also robots, so you can just rebuild them. Pretty much. Uh, exhausted, X gazes at the destruction he helped cause <laughs> and wonders why he chose to fight. Oh, he man. only... Uh, was there another way standing on the edge of the cliff and yes of course he was standing on the edge of a oh, cliff watching a building explode with a sunset going off yeah. welcome the to answers. why I like Zero so much more than Mega Man oh come on Zero had Iris what am I fighting for in X4 yeah, he was melodramatic just, too that's just one part X is always like this and I've always like thought it was like so annoying yeah standing on the edge of the cliff the answers seem to escape him. He only knows that he'll fight the Mavericks again before he finds his answer. How long will he keep on fighting? How long will his pain last? Oh my <laughs> goodness. Maybe only the X-Buster on his hand knows for sure. Oh, dot, dot, dot. Gosh. <laughs> it is only the so X-Buster on his hand it will know. It is so bad. So. I, I absolutely adore how just melodramatic nonsense the X so, series is. And you know, so you know people playing sounding. Mega Man X for the first time, like back in the day, were like, oh, he's so cool. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, plus, so they also, plus, if they were playing the first X game, they didn't know all the character, the yeah. character yeah. who died fighting against the villains wouldn't just be back in the next game. Oh, yeah, because Zero dies at the end of Mega Man 1, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, yeah. and, and then Mega you Man. rebuild him in 2? You have to find his body no. parts, and like yeah. it's either two or three, but you have to rebuild him. Yeah, you rebuild him, but Zero dies like five times throughout the series, <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> and he keeps coming back and keeps getting rebuilt and stuff like that. It's so bad. But what I love is the song, which plays during it, and that's, this is an orchestral remix of that song, so it's not beeps, boops, and beeps. Yeah, for sure. But uh, that'll be all for our show. This will be our outro song. I've been DJ Keen, and I've been joined by... DJ B. Millie, that's me. And DJ Noob. And we will see you guys next Wednesday, 10, 10-ish, 10 for Give the or next take. episode of Critical Hits. See you later, guys. Thank later, you. Everybody.